So what we did is we took the US automatic gate operator that we talked to you guys about a couple months ago and we installed one here. So we'd like to walk you through what some of the features are on that operator, show you how it works and give you a really good solid option so that you don't have to use some of those other operators we've talked about on the channel in the past. As a side note, a lot of these contractors that were here we're talking about having used something like the Spooky Controls or the Mighty Mule and a lot of the problems that they had and the general consensus was they weren't happy with them either so we've showed them a really good solid option and I'd like to walk you through that. So one of the things that a lot of the guys that went through the class with us were surprised at is how long it takes to install this when you do a proper installation. Uh, a lot of the guys said, you know, what's that take, like 10 hours? And then they watched us wire it all up and install everything, and they're like, wow. Um, something like this usually takes us about 50 hours to install done correctly. And I, one of the guys said, you know what, if I was bidding something like this, I'd have underbid it by 40 hours. I would have thought it would only take about 10 hours to do this. So there's a lot more to this when you do it correctly, and I think that's one of the misconceptions and why people don't understand why things cost what they cost. So the first thing I'll point out is we talked with Luke when he said, hey, we're gonna install a gate operator at the property. And the first thing out of my mouth was, what kind of hinges do you have? He says, oh, I got some good hinges. I got really good hinges, they're greasable. The hinges that he showed us that were on the gate were not gonna work. They're sloppy, they would have caused problems over time. And so luckily we got with D&D Technologies and they comped our company a set of, these are called badass hinges. They do have a bearing in the top and the bottom, and these will support like a 2,000 pound gate. These gates probably weigh like 150 a piece maybe. But they do allow the gate to swing very freely, eliminating friction and wear and tear on the operator. So that's why we always install really good solid hinges, and we like the badass hinges from D&D &D, &D Technologies. We sell those on the website. We'll put a link down in the description below but they're direct weld on to your post. If you're doing weld on, you can get bolt on. There's a ton of different designs. You can get self-closing hinges if you have watt gates and things like that for cattle, uh, if you always wanna make sure the gate's shut. So tons and tons of options there, but always start with a good set of hinges. Always start with a good set of gates too. Uh, these gates are heavier than your typical farm ranch bar gate, which could easily be bent. And that allowed us to do things like weld this hardware on here and made that much easier and much more stout because the other thing we need to worry about is wherever we attach this arm this needs to be fairly rigid and we don't want it tearing free over time you know as the wind and things push on this because you will get some rocking back and forth all in all the geometry on this was made very simple because of all this bracketry that they give us they give us this piece and they give us this piece and all we have to do is make sure that we're 13 inches we need to be 13 inches this way from the center line to this pivot point of the hinge. So 13 inches out, and then we need to be six inches back. And we were using a six by six post, so that made it perfect. But we can angle that, we can do all kinds of different things to get that geometry. So 13 inches this way from the center line, and then six inches this way from the center line to this pivot point is the key, if you look in the manual. Unless you're doing a push to open, which would mean that as this thing extended, the gate op swung open that way. So we installed three loops. We have the loop back here outside of the swing path. We have one underneath the gate, and then we have one on the outside of the gate. And we've talked about the different functions of those. This one on the outside is called an obstruction loop. It is good for vehicles only. The one on the inside is a shadow loop. That's in the swing path of the gate because it's a, basically a big metal detector. And so when the gate swings, it needs to that loop needs to drop out, but we put the loop on the very back, right back here so that no cars can get trapped in here and in a blind spot of the loops. Remember, loops are only good for detecting vehicles and metal, they are not people detectors. For that, we have the photo eyes on the outside of the fence. The thing I like about these photo eyes that US Automatic has is that they're wireless. So if we didn't have a dual operator set up where we had the need to get a communication wire between the two operators, this photo eye is a through beam, meaning it's not retro, uh, retro reflective. A lot of eyes have just a, like a delineator post reflector on the far post so that you don't have to wire and we find that there's a lot of faults with those. We personally in our company like through beam just like on your garage door where they're talking to each other. But the one on the other side of the roadway here is battery operated which will last about three years. So we meet all the safety requirements to be able to do that without anything underneath the roadway. In this case, we could have easily ran a wire over there because we had to run wire over to the other actuator arm. Uh, 
that if you were doing a single gate, no need to dig underneath the roadway at all. Speaking of digging under the roadway, we have this. We have a wireless keypad. So this keypad is talking with the gate operator over there with no wires. How convenient is that? And notice that it is more than six feet away from the gate. So we're totally legal there. So we have to be six feet away from any moving part of the gate because the gate swings in 15 feet out. We're like, what are we? We're like nine feet further than we need to be, I'm guessing, uh, from any moving part of the gate. If the gate swung this way, we would have had to move the keypad back just a little bit further because we do have to be about yay far away from any moving part of the gate. About this keypad, we can program it to have momentary codes or as we did in this case, we programmed a latch code so that it's basically like a party mode. So if you have company coming for dinner and you want to keep the gate open the whole time, you can put a latch code in here and until you re-enter that latch code, the gate will just stay open, which is what we've had to do here because we've got people coming in and out all day for this uh, fall fence forum. On this side of the gate, we used a junction box so that we had a place to splice our wires because when we run all of our wires through here, there's some special ends that we'll show you on the board and we have to cut all those off and save a chunk of that cord and you can't fish that through the conduit unless you're gonna use a conduit about that big. So uh, what you need to do is just cut this off, save those and then splice on your communication cable over to the operator and you'll need a junction box for all that. One thing to keep in mind is, is anytime you make any splices, it needs to be in a junction box that's accessible. We've seen a lot of people try and bury this stuff, and then if you have problems, it uh, creates a real headache for everybody. So keep that stuff accessible. This is what we did, nice and tidy, and nice cord grip here, so it's all sealed up and can move freely. <laughs> Jeez, my nose itches, okay. If you're thinking, I wonder how tough these are, we were in Dallas and we showed you the gate that they had. I think that thing was like 18 or 20 feet long, 10 foot tall, and it was so stinking heavy. The end of the gate, we could actually watch it waggle, which was crazy. So these arms are incredibly tough, these Patriot arms. And the reason that they can move such a heavy gate is because they've got a screw in them, uh, like an Acme screw. But instead of having just a regular nut, inside that nut, there's little ball bearings that roll because those ball bearings are inside that nut rolling on that Acme screw, it reduces all that friction and it just makes it seamless. So these gates will push very, very hard. There's some Franken gate in PAL that we work on all the time where somebody used one of these arms to make a vertical pivot gate and it's raising and lowering like an 18 foot gate using one of these arms. Not recommended, there's tons of problems with that gate. It's safe, but it's probably don't do that. I'm just saying, they're tough, they're super tough. We do have limits on these. There's a little plug right here that you pull out and there's some screws and you can adjust the open and close limits, not just one. This one has two, one for open and close, which is really the way it needs to be. Uh, all the gate operators that we will install have that feature. Let's talk about the cabinet. We could have made this operator solar and in fact we had planned on making it solar but we didn't really have a good place to mount the solar panel facing south not to mention there's a bunch of shade uh, and the intent was to because the house is right here always make it 120 volt so we went ahead and wired it in and didn't do a solar panel however if you want to do a solar panel it's very easy to mount a 10 10 watt solar panel and power your gate however these are not the batteries i would use we screwed up and didn't put batteries on the order when we did this. You actually want like a 35 amp hour uh, battery that's gonna be about this big. So these are undersized, but because we're plugged into power, they're gonna work fine. Uh, each one of these devices is a loop detector and we had to wire these. Unfortunately on their boards, they do not have a plug and play loop detector system like some operators do, uh, but it's very simple to wire these right into this plug. You just follow some follow some instructions in the manual and uh, if you work with operators it's going to be fairly simple for you to understand how this is all wired. We had to cut that cord off on the other side and so that's why we have a splice here. So this is cut to length and we had to splice these ends on and this is the end I'm talking about not being able to run through the conduit. This is your radio receiver, this is your battery maintainer. The other thing we got to teach those guys about is because we forgot the batteries and we had to go uptown, the only batteries we could find were six volt and we needed 12 volts. So we got to teach them about how to wire things in series. And so out of two six volt batteries, we can get 12 volt when we tie the positive and negative together. And I think that blew some people's minds. They're like, what? 
they don't have an outlet in this box so if you do an operator like this you'll have to put an outlet in this box or have your electrician put an outlet in the box uh, which we did and all you do for that is you just need a place to plug in your battery maintainer because the entire operator system is actually running off these batteries all the time the only thing the 120 volt does is keep the batteries charged up it's replacing the solar panel so if you don't do a solar panel you will need an outlet my constructive criticism for them would be to make a plug and play loop loop board where you could just use plug on loop detectors and they're already wired into the board and also maybe provide a convenience outlet in the box somewhere Lastly, we have this cool device, which is the next gate control, which allows us to operate this gate from our phone app. And it was super easy. So it has two wires, literally, like you plug that wire in right there and you hook up the antenna and you're done. Something else I will note is they gave us 10 feet of antenna, which was great if I needed to run it 10 feet over that way, but we only needed to get it above the metal. If you're installing one of these antennas, a key thing to remember is, is that it needs to be kind of needs to be the highest thing around it you don't want it down here below all this other metal because it can interfere with its uh, ability to receive signal but if it's sitting up against up taller than all the other metal you'll have really good signal and so that's what we did we just mounted it to the side of the cabinet here and didn't need a whole lot of cable so we went ahead and trimmed this and used a bulkhead fitting to run right through the cabinet and tidy it up this is what we think an operator cabinet should look like. It shouldn't be a rat's nest of wires. Probably had to cut off six feet of this wire to make it nice. And if we wanted to, we could cut probably three feet of this wire out, but we didn't figure there was a whole lot of benefit to that and we were able to tie it up kind of nice and neat. So I do not like a rat's nest of wire. That's just not quality craftsmanship. There's no artistry in that. We have secondary power on this, but you do have a USB port right there for your phone. You can just plug your phone right into that if you're on the phone with tech support or whatever, you juice that up. So one of the neat features we added to this gate is the ability to control it wirelessly through your cellular app, the Next app. And in that app, we'll show you that app here, we can see that the gate is currently closed, but the other cool thing is it has a calendar. We can set schedules. So if we want the gate to be open only from eight to five, or if we want it to be open on trash days or whatever, we can set that schedule so that it's only open during certain hours or on certain days, and we can change it on the fly anytime we want from our mobile device. If they call you, if you have a phone number on your keypad for call to enter, people can call you and you can open your gate anywhere you have cellular signal. So that's really cool. I really like that feature, and that's a feature a lot of people really want these days. We can go into the gate. We can see that it's currently closed, and we can press and hold. We get three beeps. Ta-da! Right like that, right from the phone. How amazing is that? And from the phone, we can close it again. And we can see the status anytime we're looking at this. It'll tell us it's red if it's open, it's green if it's closed. We could be sitting on the beach in Cancun and do this as long as we've got cellular service. It's worth noting that if you could, if you wanted to use a hitch pin that's locked and lock this so that you can't get it, but this is your way to, if you can't get the gate to open, you just pull this pin and then swing the gate freely. And there the timer took over and it's gonna close the gate. We do have force limiting devices, so. See, we stopped the gate. And that's what we want. up pretty high. That sound is the sound of an unhappy gate. Okay. So the way to get that alarm to go off is just hit that little button right there. It will reset and then you'll be good to go little button right there this is your open and close button so we've set the force limiting device to make sure that they're safe it can't crush a little child or somebody that gets in the way uh, it's important to note that this gate is designed for vehicles not people 
Automated gates are designed specifically and only for vehicles. If we had fence on both sides of this, we would need a gate somewhere in the fence so that the pedestrians can use the gate, not, not this gate. Oh, hey, we'll get the van to open it. FedEx is going to magically open this gate. It's like he knows all our secrets. There it goes. Ta-da! Ta How did FedEx know the code? That's crazy. This guy's wicked smart. So on these loop detectors, it's these things that's detecting the vehicle. When it detects something, that little red light on each one of these will light up. So as he drives across that, each one of these will individually light up. And when he's done, they should all be clear. Don't catch me watching walking through the gate because this isn't for pedestrians. Oh, but wait, you see how that gate stopped? I did something super dangerous and somehow the gate knew I was here because we have these safety devices here. And speaking of these safety devices, there's a requirement for where they need to be mounted. They have to be mounted within five inches of the gate panel and they need to be mounted between 21 and 27 and a half inches off the ground. So if you're installing these, that's the requirement. And whoo Just like that, it stopped again. It doesn't even like my high kicks. All in all, this system is my absolute favorite for a entry level system. It gives you a lot of advanced features without a whole ton of cost. But is it gonna be as cheap as what you find in the farm stores? Absolutely not. You're getting a lot more bang for your buck with these than you are on a farm store gate operator. Something like the Majestic Donkey or the spooky controls but these are going to give you a ton more reliability and you're not going to have all the nuisance problems that you have with those other operators while at the same time being much safer and that's why it's our recommendation if you've got a farm gate on your property or even if you have a really nice ornamental gate these are a great operator and they're perfect for a solar installation because they're so low draw they're designed to operate using all of the correct safety stuff and not kill your batteries. As we detailed in one of our other videos, some of the other operators do have some of the safeties. None of them have the loops that I could find. I wasn't able to find anywhere where anybody mentioned any loops, so while they can be installed, good luck trying to figure that out on your own. The photo eyes specifically said you can't use them on a solar installation, and with this, you absolutely 100% can use the safety devices. And in fact, the gate operator won't work if you don't have the safety device installed. So that's how adamant they are that you use them. It knew that the vehicles were there, it knew that I was there. We have an incredibly safe gate that operates exactly like we want it to, and we can even operate it from our phone, which is what most people want today. So is this gonna be $1,000 installed? No, it's not gonna be $1,000 installed. You're gonna spend a little bit more money, but you're not gonna have all the repair costs, you're not gonna have all the hassle of it. You don't run the risk of damaging a vehicle or harming somebody, which is huge. We do have our signs placed on the gate, which is also a requirement of EOL 325. That's about all I have to say about that. And until next time, you have a good dang day and make sure your gates are safe and functional.